morning. Thank you so much for joining us on today's edition of Business Morning. We're live to you on Channels Television, your home for the news. I'm Harriet Agbenyi. Let's take a look at some of the stories that we're tracking at this time, although it's in most of the major papers. But it seems as though the federal government is ramping up its talk about recapitalization of the Bank of Agriculture. But the federal government says it will be doing this with 3 trillion naira. Now, according to the Minister of State for Agriculture, Heineken Lokbogbiri, who made the announcement at a forum in Abekuta Dogun State Capital, this is to allow farmers in the country to have access to funds at affordable interest rates. Of course, you know that's the major, one of the major issues for most of the farmers, access to affordable funds at affordable rates. And even though we have the Development Bank of Nigeria now on stream, that's going to be catering to the small, medium um, enterprises. And it's a welcome development, especially at this time, that the federal government is looking for ways to ramp critical sectors of the economy. Now, the minister also mentioned that the nation's fish demand stands at 3.1 metric tons per annum, but the current production is around 1.1 metric tons tons per annum living a deficit of 2.1 metric tons can i hear the ching ching so everybody's thinking about how they can tap into this deficit and begin to ensure that so we have enough fish to last us at least for a long time i know the association of uh, seafood producers has been complaining about the porous borders that continues to allow the influx and uh, the import of you know, frozen fish, and most of which is not really good for your health. So you should actually look at this plan and see how best you can work with your state government, your local government, and even the federal government to improve uh, fish production to meet the fish demand. But in the meantime, the federal government has concluded plans to settle the over 230.9 billion Nara backlog of export expansion ground owed to exporters, and that's according to the executive director and chief executive officer of the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, Shegun Awolowo, who says government has decided to pay the areas and treat them as national debt. He explains that the council is also in talks with the debt management office with a view to issuing treasury bills to offset this debt. Let's come to the markets now. Quite a lot going on at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. But from yesterday, the management says it will sanction 11 companies for failing to file their audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2016. Of course, all companies listed and quoted on the Nigerian Stock Exchange have until the end of the first quarter, which ended March 31, to turn in their full year results for 2016. So most of these companies have not. The defaulting companies include AG Leventis Nigeria, African Alliance Insurance, Austin Laz & Company, Capital Hotel, Conoil, Niger Insurance, Premier Paints, Resort Savings and Loans, Smart Products Nigeria, Sovereign Trust Insurance, and Union Diagnostic and Clinical Services, PLC. Well, the NSC explains that the listed companies audited financial statements became due as of Friday, March 31st, 2017. The local burst is therefore advising investors to trade with caution on the securities of these companies owing to the absence of up-to-date financial information on them. So what else is in the news? The Central Bank of Nigeria announced over the weekend that it will begin to sell short tenured forward futures of between uh, 7 to 30 days. So let's take a look at some FX market news that we're tracking. The Central Bank opens new window of about $20,000 per quarter of forward FX sales for imports of eligible finished and semi-finished items to small and medium-scale enterprises. Now, the central bank special intervention is to help crowd due, is due to crowding out of the SMEs of forex by larger firms when trying to access this at the official window. So, this is a very welcome development. We've got Amaka Ajewo coming up on the program much later. Amaka is a research analyst with Financial Derivatives Company. She'll be talking to us about this latest piece of news, this latest news and actions by the Central Bank of Nigeria for SMEs and its impact, expected impact, of course, on the market. The Still talking about this FX market news, SMEs with asset base ranging uh, between 5 million and um, 500 million naira fit the bill to access this uh, 
um, twenty thousand dollar per quarter F forward FX sales from the central bank, and they must have in their employment between ten to two hundred persons. Exchange rate for the new SMEs windows is yet to be announced, so we'll closely monitor that from the central bank of Nigeria. But of course, you can go to the central bank of Nigeria's website to get more details on this particular information. But coming in from the currencies market, let's quickly take you through how the naira is looking like against most of the baskets of currencies that we take a look here at the program talking about the dollar the british pound and the euro starting from the interbank spot market we have the naira to the dollar at 306 naira 15 kobo but to the british pound is at 390 naira 74 kobo and to the euro it's at 324 naira 50 kobo at the parallel market the naira still continued uh, flattish yesterday as um it closed at 405 naira to the dollar, 490 to the British pound, and 425 naira to the euro. And according to analysis report from Investment One, going forward, they expect CBN's continued intervention in the FX market to support the local currency in the near term. We'll talk a little bit more about this. Yesterday, the Association of Bureau of the Shonj Operators of Nigeria held a special meeting here in Lagos, and the president talked a little bit talks more about the cbn's intervention and what they're expecting they also talked about having a reduction between the spread from two naira to five naira increasing the production i beg your pardon increasing the spread between the uh, from two naira to five naira so we'll talk a little bit more about that uh channel television producer tempo ashaju spoke to the president amin Guadabe after that special meeting you want to stick around to hear what he said but one of the most important takeaways from that meeting is that they will continue to support the central bank as it continues its intervention in the market trying to converge the rates between the official and the street market and they will punish any errant uh, operator who flouts the guidelines uh, according guidelines and rules according to the central bank of nigeria so you want to stick around to listen to that particular uh, interview that tempo ashaju had with alaji aminu guadabe but let's take a look at uh, closing figures from yesterday's uh, trading with trades worth 585 million naira that's about 584.71 approximated to 585 million naira recorded on the first trading day of the week the nigerian stock market opened the week in the red the all share index dropped 0.47 percent to close at 25,626.37 with a market capitalization of 8.86 trillion naira market turnover was however mixed as volume increased by 78 percent to about 191.83 million shares exchanged in 2,626 deals. Of course, the market was largely dragged down by sell-offs in consumer and banking stocks. Declines recorded by Nigerian breweries, Dangote Sugar and Guaranteed Trust Bank cancelled the gains recorded by Total Fidelity and FBNH holdings let's take a look at the nasdaq otc market and that's the market for unlisted securities so yesterday that index dropped 4.28 percent to birth at 431.79 with market capitalization at 427.55 billion naira but take a look at um the number of shares exchanged yesterday about 1.05 million Exchange where shares were exchanged by investors in five deals valued at 9.87 million naira. So let's talk about the fixed income segment of the market. According to uh, results from the FMDQ OTC's market for FGN bonds, about 100 about 11.30 billion naira was recorded in value for the total a uh, benchmark fgn bonds traded yesterday in about 82 deals but let's take a look at the top four most actively traded as at uh, the close of business the most active was the bond maturing on the 18th of march 2036 had about 32 deals done 
with a value of 5.50 billion naira recorded and a price high of 80.01. And the list most actively traded with a value of 1 billion naira recorded is the bond maturing on the 17th of March 2027. Of course, um, most analysts expect investors' appetite to continue to rise in the fixed income segment of the market as they feel more comfortable buying FGN bonds and treasury bills as well. So let's take a look at how the treasury bill segment of the market finished off yesterday. All right, so we had 386 deals recorded for, with a value of 108.07 billion naira for the first trading day of the week. Investors still favoring mostly short to medium dated bills except for the bill maturing on the 7th of december that's uh, a new one especially since as i mentioned investors continue to take um short stands towards the treasure bill segment of the market but these were the four most actively traded by investors let's quickly talk about the s p nigeria bond index that's also listed on the fmdq otc securities exchange as of yesterday the index level is at 273 Point seven four, appreciating 0.06 percent, uh, with a month to date also up 0.30 percent, and year to date is at 4.42 percent.